Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Estancia Lapacho here in Paraguay. We're just driving past our broken down Big Bud. It's an absolute crying shame that we don't get to use our Big Bud, but uh, such, is, such is life. That is the way things sometimes pan out. Now, I know I'm using the small cultivator here, and you may wonder what I'm doing because we've got the big cultivator, but remember we've got the challenger up on the plateau and the big bud is not able to be used, so uh, this this is the one that we're going to have to use. And as we're not doing sugarcane anymore, I should have already started doing this. I meant to do this before it started growing up again. And I've noticed that we've had another growth stage. It's grown up through a bit, so I'm going to get on and start... Uh, cultivating plowing up this field so that, that one's all done we've got our sprayer has now run out of uh, stuffs um, stuffs is the technical term for fertilizer there we go fertilizer um, so we need to bring so we need to get uh, more fertilizer into this one but what I was gonna do is rather than bring it back this time I'm going to go through again there we go I want to get to this one and we're going to load... I've got a tractor right in the way there. So let me just go and move that tractor a minute. Move this one out of the way. And then we can get the lorry onto that trailer. Load up those tanks of fertilizer. And scoot on up to the top of the farm with the truck. Truck, lorry, whichever one you want to call it. And we'll do it, be able to do it like that. So I don't have a weekly question this week. There's no weekly question at all. Instead, what I want you to do is get into the comment section down below. And suggest new maps that you would like me to move on to and then I will take five of the top suggestions and um, put them up for a vote like I um, normally do. Now, I'm reluctant to go and play some of the newest ones. Um, what do we got? That's on pallets. That's okay, right. Yeah, I'm reluctant to play some of the newest ones because everybody's doing those and I don't want to do the same maps that everybody else is doing. I know that several of you have said you kind of like the idea of... Uh, me doing it um, because then you get to see my take on that particular map and I do appreciate that I really do I mean I, I, I love the fact that you you want to watch my channel and you appreciate my channel so much that you want to see me play these maps as opposed to watching some of the other channels play these maps and that does actually mean more to me than you realize uh, but at the same time I'm also very much aware that it's gonna be boring for quite a few people because a lot of you if you want a farming simula simula farming simulator farming simulator fix you don't just go with the three episodes that I produce each week you also watch other channels as well and if they're all doing the same if, if we're all doing the same map it's going to get really dull for a lot of you so I'm reluctant to do any of the really big popular maps at the moment um, I would prefer to do maps that not so many people are doing so that we get some more variation, so that um, those of you who are after a farming simulator fix do get a little bit more to watch, a little bit more to see, and you're not just stuck watching the same thing all the time. Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind with the suggestions. I'm not saying that I'm not going to um, do those maps. It does depend on what the suggestions are. Can I reach from here? No, I can't. I'm going to have to move around. I think I'm going to have to fold up the booms anyway. I was kind of hoping that I could avoid folding up the booms. All right, we'll leave that one. We'll leave the truck where he is. Oh, I know what I want to do. I know why I jumped out. It was so that I could come over here and I could take those straps off. That's why I wanted to do it. There. Now we come back into here. Let that fold up and then we can pull up alongside the truck. And we can load up these bits. Go on. There we go. Right. So now we can pull up to here. And I didn't want to jump out of there either. There we go. No, finally. We finally figured out how to play the game. It's, it's been a while. You'd, you'd think I'd have already figured this, this, this out by now. But um, So, yeah, comments today, please. Make suggestions for maps that you'd like to see me playing. What do you want to see me do? Uh, is there anything in particular that um, really tickles your fancy? Is there maps that uh, you've been looking at for a long time and you really, really do want to see me play it? Or maybe there's just, you know, there's something new that you, you've only just sort of heard of and you think, well, this, this might be interesting. Um, suggest them because I'm, I'm going to take a look at the, the various different suggestions and then I'm going to pick my five favorites because it is very important that I'm also, um, I, I enjoy playing the map that we pick out. So I'm going to go through the suggested list and I'm going to pick out the five that I like the most. And then from those five you'll then be able to make your choices. So I'm not going to, if, if you suggest, if you know, 
if uh, half the people here suggest a map and then I look at the map and I really don't like it and I don't like the feel of the map, I'm not going to play it. It's, there's no point in me running a series on a map that I don't like the look of. Um, it's, it's just not going to work at all. It's absolutely not going to be any good at all for anybody at all. Um, so I will definitely only pick out maps that I like the look of personally. And I'm interested to see what you what you suggest because I get suggested maps all the time, uh, just about every single episode, or on other videos as well. People are always suggesting different maps that you'd like me to play, and some of them sound really cool. Others don't really sound like the sort of map that I'd enjoy playing, um, and some of them sound absolutely amazing. So yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what you suggest. Now we got that guy underway there. And he's going to do the rest of field six here. And I think that top part of field seven may have already been done. We've got that field. We've got field four to do over there and field nine. And then the grass could do a little bit of something on it as well. We'll leave him going. Oh, and we've got field one. We mustn't forget field one either. We've got a lot that we need to do. Right. So we'll leave that going there. And yes, we're on to this one now. We, we want to go on to here. I've got this, There are other things that I want to do, but at the moment I'd like to get this ploughing job done because we've also got to go and build some um, new sheds and stuff up by the pigs fairly quickly because we've got other things that we want to do up there. Let's just check the sugarcane price at the moment. $276. $276. That's pretty good. I mean, the harbour is still better. I'd like to sort of see what we can get with that a little bit later. I've been loading up the train. I started loading up the next thing on the train as well uh, in between yesterday's episode and today or at the beginning of this episode anyway I set the next carriage loading up so we're gonna have a full load on the train that we can take up and we can sell pretty quickly I don't want to get too close to the edge I know I know I know I'm turning sideways with this so I've got a subsoiler here with really deep wide well so the long spikes um, if you were to turn a corner with this thing in the ground uh, you'd be breaking everything. You literally, you'd be breaking stuff off the tractor. You'd be breaking stuff off the subsoiler. Everything on it would be breaking if you were to turn and corner with this thing on the back. So I'm fully aware that this is 100% unrealistic turning like this. It would only be straight line. It literally, is only straight lines. You might, if you've got a really long field, you might be able to get away with a prolonged curve at some point. But um, you'd struggle even that you struggle with normally you've got to you've got to take it out in a series of straight lines it's sort of the same with just about any subsoiler you get it's um it's a lot of hard work trying to get a subsoiler to work so we'll just bring this one up along here and also we wouldn't want to go out too close to the edge here would we because if you were to do this in real life if you were running a subsoiler that goes down like 18 inches two feet into the ground um that's a that's a long way down that's um uh, 45 to 60 centimeters into the ground that's that is quite a there's quite a depth you know and if you're running that close very close to the edge of a plateau like this you'd be completely ripping away the side of the bank there wouldn't you so you really wouldn't want to be doing that if you could absolutely get away with not doing it I think our biggest problem here is going to be those um, big piles of wood chips there the great big lumps because the um, the subsoiler doesn't seem to get over them very well. We might want to go through with... I'm thinking that we could actually come up with a cultivator and run around a little bit over some of the big piles of wood chips and that would remove the piles of wood chips and then we could go through a lot easier with the subsoiler. But we'll see how we do with this one. I quite like the idea of sort of doing everything with this one if we can. Um, we could do a couple rounds around the outside, maybe th maybe three rounds and I would like the second and third times is going to be tidying up all of these um, constant turns that we're doing and then we could even use the GPS and get the GPS mod running on it that would keep it nice and tidy straight lines all the way straight up and down and um, certainly be a lot easier although I see a job like this one I really don't think you'd be using a GPS system at all this this would be something you would do by eye you wouldn't be running worrying about GPS and getting things accurate on here you maybe if you once you establish the field maybe you would use GPS on it afterwards but I, I just don't think you would start with and right there I thought would be an excellent place to try and build a ramp up through and, I mean, there are other places that we could go, but it doesn't seem very high there. So I, I thought that might be an easier spot to try and get... Ooh, I've gone too far. I'm too, I'm too carried away with talking, and I've, I've rushed over too far. 
Where exactly did I want to go? I'm not entirely sure now. I think we'll... Well, if we go to here and we go straight down through, there's only that one tree, so we can have a, a reasonably tidy edge on our field here. I know that I've just reversed with the plough in the ground. Ooh, okay, now I've just come out too far. All right, we'll, let's, let's just ignore the, um, the, the very bad workmanship there. We'll get that one tree when we, come, when we finish. When we, when we come back again, we can get that tree. And if I come straight down through... Yep, yeah, that's, that's actually looking pretty good, I think. Come down through there. And I'll stop and I'll take the plough out of the ground at this end as well. Come all the way down. How close do we want to get? Say about there would be good. We can lift it up. Come straight over here. Now we're going to have quite a bend in the edge of the field on this bit. Lower that down there. And come over here. And then we've got a, quite a kick. This is the other thing with turning. Is that it throws the plough right in and sort of... Um, accentuates the, the tight curve on the field. I think it'll be alright. Go on. A little bit further. Just a little bit more. And we're done. We've done one complete round around the outside and that was actually more difficult than I thought it would be. But we got that bit there. Then I'll come over through here and I don't think we want to go out any further there. We don't want to sort of move out onto that little bit that sticks out. This, it's not going to be worth trying to work that at all. And we come down through here and we're just going to now try and straighten up the edge line on this as we go through. And I do like going through, I like having the wood chips here. I do like being able to sort of take them out as we go along. Um, it does mean that we're going to have a little bit of extra work to do in places, especially with the really big heaps. As we found out in the last episode when we were um, stuck on top of the heap. So we cannot drive the Challenger straight up over the heaps. That doesn't work. What you've got to do is you've got to go along the side of the heaps like this and just sort of take it in little slices. And even then it doesn't work very well. See? It sort of comes up like that and doesn't get it all. So you, you really do struggle with it. Bring that in there. I think really the best way to do it is to put that one up on there like that, right onto the top. And then... There we go. That's done it done a really good job of it sort of he says as he messes it up again yeah it's, be, it's because it makes the piles so high and look, look how look how sort of sharp and pointy they go it, it, it does kind of mess it up a little bit come through there there we go nailed it okay perfect we got that just right um with a little well it, 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 okay it was a little bit of a struggle but we, we did eventually get it now we got another great big heap over here on the edge it's going to be another interesting one because we couldn't quite reach the the bottom i think we need to just go up to it and if i take the plow out of the ground here like that and then we just back up to it from this direction like that and then lower the plow into the ground and it won't work at all. It just, just lifts it up into the air and gets stuck. Let's try that again. There we go. Oh, now it's sort of... No, it's, it's gotten stuck again. Uh, okay, now I'm, <laughs> I'm really stuck. Uh, what, am I, what am I supposed to do now? Oh, oh. Oh, no. Now I've, I've, I've got it up into the air at the moment. Let's lower it down again. Like that. And maybe this will work. There we go. There we go. I knew that we could do it. I had complete and total faith in my own abilities. Okay, maybe not, but still. We'll bring that one back through. Right, I don't think we thought this through very well, did we? We absolutely didn't think this through very well. We'll go and do that other heap a little bit later. We won't worry about that one right now. What I want to do now is I need to come over this side so that we can back up onto the heap a little bit from this direction. There. And get those bits. Because quite frankly, I think we're going to struggle to get that. The way that it lifts it up. Oh, no, we got some of it. Uh, now what's it doing? There we go. Right, that's got all of that bit. We've just got this tiny little lump here. If we can get over that, we'll be all right. There, I think, I think if we, yeah... We just want to come to that bit. There we go. Okay, we've done it. 
We've absolutely done it. It was really, really easy. We had no problems whatsoever, uh, as long as you ignore the last sort of five, ten minutes. Something like that. Um, I didn't actually, I genuinely didn't think it would be this difficult to, like, plow in a, a few bits of wood chips. I didn't think that it would struggle with it this much. I thought it was just a question of um, dragging it through. And I'm starting to think that maybe it was kind of a bit of a blessing in disguise that the big bud didn't work today that um this week that it's broken down because i think we just struggled more trying to get the big bud and the lifter to get those piles down through than we would have with um with this one here because this one at least we can maneuver it round a lot more easily it's a lot lot easier to get this one to maneuver around than it is oh uh oh hang on got another great big heat there uh what should we do this i'll come up to this side of it a bit I might be out. This one might actually be easier. This is a smaller heap here. It's not quite so big as some of the ones we've worked through. Yeah, it's a lot smaller. It does make life a lot easier for us. Back up a bit more. And lower down. There we go. One more. Just There's only a little tight. There we go. Just a little tiny bit on that bit there. And we go. And then we can start again. Right. Let's lower that one in there. And some more. There we go. There's another heap over there. I think that one, well, I'm hoping that one isn't quite as big as some of the others. If I'd known it was going to be like this, I'd have spent more time driving around with the wood chipper when we were actually doing that bit. And here I am turning really sharp again with the plow. Um, absolutely destroying... Oh, no, that is a huge heap there. That's, that's going to take a bit of getting through, that one is. Um, but, yeah, absolutely destroying all of the, the plow, the links. is probably buckling up the... Um, the three-point link on the back of the tractor as well as um, ripping off the, the joints. <laughs> it's it's uh, completely obliterate everything. Try and turn like that. You, two, one of two things is going to happen. Either it's just not going to turn and you, um, the machine is very, very well made. It's just not going to let you turn. Like um, if you're going along with the tractor and you start turning the wheels, if, if the tractor just keeps going in a re relatively straight line, whilst your um, subsoiler is in the ground and it doesn't turn um, without breaking anything. It just shows you that the impressive workmanship that goes into actually making the tractor and the subsoiler itself. If, on the other hand, you hear a lot of um, pings and bangs and um, other such things like that and then your tractor lurches around to the side, not quite such a good advert for the workmanship of your machine. Not quite. I do wonder... I don't know if you know, but years ago, they, they used to do testing. Um, there used to be a job where you would test a tractor. And it was for the Grey Fergie, the TE20, the classic Grey Fergie. I think that was the first tractor ever released with three-point linkage on it. And those tractors, when they were first rolling off the production line, they had a dedicated testing team that made sure everything on those tractors was up to scratch and they would test them for I, I can't remember now I think it they think they did like um, 300 hours of testing on them it was something like that it was it was a lot of testing and in order to test them they wouldn't just go and take the tractor and run it through like a, a few tasks or something like that they, these guys would absolutely hammer these tractors into the ground they would do everything they could to abuse these tractors and that was their job they had to do like proper extreme driving and they and um while they were making the te20 every 1000th tractor was taken off the production line um for i think it was roughly every a thousand um and it was taken off the production line and put into testing so they had a huge number of people who were doing this testing because they were selling a lot of these tractors and they would do things like this they, they would plow up um virgin ground like this and absolutely hammer through it and they would plow as fast as they possibly could they wouldn't like slow down or anything like that they would find rough ground full of roots and everything like that and they would race through it with the plow as fast as they could plow as fast as ever they could go and there was it you couldn't go too fast with these things and then they'd go on to cultivating they'd stick a cultivator on the back and they wouldn't go up and down with the plow lines like you would normally because it gives you a smoother ride nope 
they would get a nice thick cushion to sit on the seats because those seats were metal bucket seats and they were incredibly uncomfortable. You always had a cushion on there of some sort. They would put a cushion on. A lot of them would do this standing up because it, they just couldn't sit down. And they would go across the plough lines slightly at a diagonal so that they weren't like directly jumping up and down. It, it, so it would like rattle the tractor around more. And they would absolutely cane it. They would go as fast as they possibly could. And if they thought for a moment they could go faster, they would. They would be roaring the tractor, the acceleration on the tractor. They'd put it in a low gear and they would have the revs right up as hard as they could go. So the tractor was absolutely screaming. And they would absolutely mash these things around the fields as fast as they could possibly go. And they would do loads of jobs like this. They would get a trailer and they would load the trailer up really completely overloaded with with like concrete blocks and stuff and then they would race these up and down um the fields and they would they would do everything they could any task that they thought a farmer might do they would do it but they would really um take it to the absolute extreme so farmer's going to be carrying a, a, a heavy load around okay fine we'll overload the tractor so it can barely move and then have the engine screaming and try and get up some hills and then we'll try and drag this load over really, really, really rough ground as fast as we possibly can. And these blokes, if they came to you at the end of it and they said, we've tested this tractor for 300 hours, they had not driven, it, it was not driving Miss Daisy, okay? This was definitely not a driving Miss Daisy moment. This was absolute extreme, this, this was extreme tractor driving. This was the first extreme tractor driving and these guys were paid to do it. This was their job. They went out. If they told you it had done 300 hours, if it, they've tested it for 300 hours, you could be certain that this tractor had been to hell and back with, in the course of that 300 hours. It was amazing. And there's some very, very old archive footage that you can see of some of these tractors going, being put through their paces. And it's incredible. You see these things bouncing around, and you have very, a lot of very old footage is often sped up a little bit. It's... um. You know, I think it was due to the way that it like recorded or something like that that it was difficult to get it um, entirely accurate with the speed. So a lot of it does look like um, it's all sped up. And then you find out that actually the footage for how they were doing these tractors, that's not sped up. That's actually what they were doing. And it's amazing. So it's, if you can, go and look it up. Go Google it or um, look it up on YouTube and have a look at these guys putting tractors through their paces, uh, testing the TE-20s, uh, the old footage of um, test driving TE-20s or something like that, I, I can't remember exactly what it was, but, or the Grey Fergie, you can call them the Grey Fergies because that's what most people called them, uh, well they still do to be honest, but um, yeah, if, if they came back, they, they would go back to the factory um, and back to the manufacturers and they would say, we tested this for 300 hours, after 300 hours this item here became weak and it fell off. Okay, th th that would be the equivalent of probably 1,500 hours or more of ordinary use from a normal farmer. Um, but it would show the weak links. And then they would go, right, well, we need to improve that bit there. And we need to make that bit stronger. Um, we need to do this, or we need to do that. And that was how the, these tractors were so successful. Because they, it, it, in large part, because of this testing team they, and, and the way that they did this. Because... The attention to detail on these tractors was phenomenal. Now, I don't know if this still happens. I don't know if they run these tractors through these kinds of tests anymore. If they take, like, a Challenger, like this this bad boy right here, and they do something similar. They absolutely hammer the thing into the mud as hard and as fast as ever they can. You know, really, really smash this thing as much as they possibly can in order to fully test absolutely everything on it. I don't know if they still do that. That, that, may, that may now be a thing of the past. They may do other ways of testing and stress testing and then sort of get reports back from farmers on things that are becoming weak and so on. Um, genuinely got no idea. I would love it if they still did. I would love it if there is still a job out there where you can go along and your job was to drive the machines so hard and... And, well, it's, I was going to say badly, but it's not bad driving. That was definitely not bad driving. You look at what they're doing. They're, they're not driving it badly. They're just driving it hard. 
and they're really working that machine and taking every ounce of anything that that machine has got to give and they're taking it and they're using it and they're, they're pushing it even beyond that so yeah i would love it if there is still a job where you can go and you can start working for a tractor company where your job is to run a machine into the ground to take what that machine has to offer and push it beyond its capable limits and then go back to them and say did all right up until about 180 hours in and then this bit got a little bit weak so you need to do something about that um that, that would be a very satisfying sort of job i think and does anybody know is there anything like that still available you know does is there something like that um, still around? Is, is that kind of job, does it still exist or do, have they stopped that completely? I know that some of you are involved in um, the manufacturing and agricultural manufacturing. So I'm assuming that there's got to be some form of testing. I'm just not quite sure how extreme it is anymore. Um, is, we're, we're talking about um, sort of around the time of the uh, Second World War and just after the Second World War when... No, they wanted things to last. They didn't... It wasn't a disposable sort of... Things weren't being built to be disposed of. Things were being built to last. If you bought something, you didn't want to have to go and... You, well, the, the whole idea was you wouldn't need to go and buy it again. The, the, um, the way the country operated just after the Second World War, and a lot of Europe as well, was what you had was quite sort of valuable. You really had to um, work carefully and, and work smart in order to make what you had last as long as possible because money was in short supply for everybody you know, mon money wasn't something that um we had a lot uh, well they had a lot i'd say we i wasn't around then um that was a little bit before my time but that that was kind of where this came from was um they wanted these machines to last that's why you can find so many Grey Fergies still for sale. You, you can go and buy Grey Fergies and you can buy the Massey Ferguson 35. Um, there's loads of them around. Right, why is it, why is it still going? Wow. <laughs> I didn't actually expect that. He's gone all the way over there. He's, he's gone that little bit there on field 7 and he's carried on. He's gone over onto field 9 and he's gone all the way through there. So there's a little tiny strip there on field 9. And then we've got field 4 and we've got field 1. So let's go over to this one. Oh, no, 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 no. I didn't want to do that. I want to go on to that one. I want to enter, not quit game, whatever next. Right, we've got a tiny, tiny little bit here. I honestly don't think it's worth bothering to come back up here and get this little strip. And there's a little strip on there. Um, I suppose maybe it's worth coming back. It's like half the field. All right, I suppose we could come back and we could get that little bit. We go and load up again, and then we can come back and we get that bit. Is that field there that we're not putting any more fertilizer on because um, we've can't remember what the reason was where there's like a disease in the field so we're not going to put fertilizer on to represent some of the yield loss and um, that, that would sort of explain it now uh, if i come i'll tell you what we'll we'll load i should have just brought the lorry over here it would have been a lot easier we'll load up and we'll run back over and we'll grab that little bit over there we've got yeah we've got those two little bits there field eight has got a little tiny strip there i'm not going to worry about that i'm going to end up missing it anyway um, and we come down to field one and we'll do field one and then we've got field four to do and a little bit on field three as well we might be able to get all of it I'm quite sure at the moment but we might be able to we'll have to see my weekly question for this week is not a question my weekly question this week is that i want you to go into the comments section and suggest new maps for me to move on to after this series so we've we've worked this series for a while and I would like to... Let me just jump back into here a minute and take those straps off. Um, yeah, I would like to... We will be moving on to a new map before too long. I'm not quite sure how long before we move on to it, but we will be moving on to a new map. And when we do, I want to move to a, a map that I'm quite passionate about but i also want it to be one that you guys also want as well so i want suggestions in the comment section for different maps for me to try i will pick five of my favorites i may only pick four i may only pick four i will just sort of state that i might only select four of these maps and i will put them up for a vote so that you can all vote for them i don't know when i will put the vote up but it will be towards the end of this series and then you can all vote on the next maps now 
You can suggest whichever maps you like. However, I am going to say that I'm reluctant to do the really big popular maps just because they're really big popular maps and everybody else is already doing those maps. So I'm kind of reluctant to go and do them myself because you, there's already lots and lots of Let's Plays on these maps. So I'd kind of like one on a map that isn't quite so popular that not so many people have covered so that we've got a bit more variation in gameplay so that um because a lot of you do watch other youtubers as well and um, and then you're not all just watching the same map over and over and over so let's just let this one unfold a minute and then we can start slow i wonder if it's going to actually do it. if i press h is it going to do it it's just going to say job done Sometimes it'll say job done, sometimes it'll do it. It'll come up here. If I just leave this, he's going to go and do that field there, and we don't want him to do that field there. We want him to leave that field. So what have we got here? I'm just curious what we've got in the way of crops, actually. Oh, that's barley up there. I've been thinking about buying field 12 anyway. It would sort of, like, take out... We then got everything up here. So I'm actually thinking that maybe we should go over and... But what's the um, the growth stage on this? That's the same as this one here. And we've actually got three growth stages on this farm. We've got that bit there, and then this here is all like that. And then the beans here, they're further along still. I reckon we could go and buy that field. I don't think that would be out of the way. We'll do that. We're going to do that in a minute. We got another 235,000. We bought the Challenger. And a lot of you did want me to buy the Challenger. A lot of you were asking me to buy that Challenger. Um... Well, not necessarily that one, but we're asking me to buy a challenger. And also a lot of you wanted me to buy land. So I'm, I'm sort of thinking we can kill two birds with one stone with this. And I don't think it, not very many of you suggested that particular field. But, you know, it's, it is some land. So let's fold this one back up again. And we'll come over the field along here. Technically, this isn't quite realistic. Just cut, taking a shortcut across the field. Even though we got row props on, you still wouldn't really want to do that. Uh, we'll go down to field one. I don't think there was anything, any, no, there wasn't any other patches, was there? There was a little strip in field eight, but we weren't going to bother with that. So we go to field one, and we will spray field one, and then when we've done that one, we can go across to field four, it is, and we can get that one done as well. Uh, oh, we we'll, may as well go up through here, because there's no actual road going through to field one from this side, unless we go around to the bottom edge. I don't really want to do that. So we go over here. And I'll also, actually we could start spreading our wings a bit here. So yeah, oh no, um, that bit in the middle doesn't actually need fertilizer because it was already done. It was back when we had to cultivate up half a field. So that bit we don't need to concern ourselves with. We'll come on around here and we'll start down this side. Question is, will it turn around and do the correct side of the field or not? Go to there, and then press H. Nice. You did that all right. And hopefully they're not... Are they going to tangle up? Sometimes they do. Sometimes they sort of... They, they, they get caught up on each other, which is never very helpful. I think it's got... <laughs> I think it's going to. I think we've timed this absolutely beautifully, and they're going to get caught up on each other. There we go. Is, is it going to make it? Is it going to make it? Ooh... Because if the boom had been back just a little bit further, then it would have stopped for that tractor, and that tractor would have stopped for the boom as well, and, and they both would have stopped. So let's visit field 12 a minute, and there it is. Barley is growing nicely. We we can buy this one for 110,000. We can do a mission on this field, actually, uh, with the minion weight, no less. We're not going to. We, we're just going to buy the field. There we go. 110,000. We are now the proud owners of this field as well, and I forgot to check how much fertilizer it's got on it. Uh, none whatsoever. So we're going to need to come racing back up here and just whip a little bit of fertilizer on that field. You know, unless, of course, we take that field as our non-fertilized field because that one, that, that would really kill the yield on it. No, we'll stick with my original plan. It's, it's field 10 and 11 that we're going to do. So we'll come back down over to here again. And, yeah, that one's fine. Okay, we'll let that one carry on there. And we're going to go back up onto the plateau and we're going to do a little bit more ploughing before we're done. Start back up again. Right. So we're doing a lot better now. We've gotten into... We've sort of worked our way into the field a little bit more. And it's quite a long, narrow field. So it does take a while to do a pass around the field. 
but it's not going to be very many passes around the field before we've completely finished this job. So we'll do a bit up through there. And I think what we'll do tomorrow, I missed a bit there. I think what we'll do tomorrow is we'll do a little bit of ploughing, but we're not going to spend all, all the time ploughing tomorrow. Um, instead, what we'll do is we'll do a little bit of ploughing and then we will go up and we'll drive up towards the pigs and we will see what we need to do up there ready for building some new sheds. I'd like some new sheds up there. Um, there are some grain storage bins that we can use. I'm not sure which ones we're going to use, but there are a few different ones available. I'm hoping that we can get one so that it's not like linked to the main farm. And instead, we go up there, we, um, we can store some grains up there. And they're, they're stored separately from the, the main farm. Um, I can't actually remember which ones it is. There are some there. There's definitely some bins available that we can do this with. Uh, so if we can use some of those, I think that would be absolutely brilliant. That would work out really nicely for kind of what I've got planned. Oh, okay. Let's not go over the top of these heaps because if we do, we end up getting stuck. But I might be able to just pull into the side of them here. We've got several great big heaps here. I think this is where we had one of the big trees. A, I'm pretty sure there is a big tree around here somewhere. Let's just put that one up on there. Uh... Well, that doesn't want to work. It doesn't want to work at all. Okay. Uh, I can go forward. No, I can go backwards, but I can't go forwards. And uh, now I can't go either way at all. Let me lower that down. Nope, that's not going to work. Can I, can I do it? Keep it going forward. Nope. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> we're stuck again I really shouldn't have left these heaps quite as big as we did this this was our mistake that this was our big error up here was leaving these heaps as big as we did it's not supposed to do this it's not supposed to get hung up like this this is a challenger and that is a pile of wood chips I'm pretty sure that the pile of wood chips is not supposed to beat the challenger you see, you know, the laws of physics dictate that these piles of wood chips are not this strong. They are not that powerful. Apparently they are. Apparently these are the most powerful wood chips in the known universe. And they have properties the likes of which we've never seen before. This is the new super material. Everybody's looking for super material. Scientists all over the world are looking for super materials that we can use to replace plastics and concretes. And... What they want is something that is light, it is durable, it is very strong, and we can so we can easily like construct all sorts of buildings with it, but it's also gotta be cheap. It's also gotta be cheap. And the super materials that they've found so far are pretty good, but they're not cheap. They're very, very expensive to produce. So at the moment we've found no replacement for concrete. And they are working on it. There are teams of mines far superior to my own who work on this diligently day and night all over the world and the, 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 the quest for the perfect super material is, is always ongoing and one of the things they want it for is space travel because um, and well not like long distance space travel but upper well it's, it's basically upper atmosphere travel they, they go up into just just the very edge of space and then come back down again um, and if they've got a material that is very, very light, like plastic, but at the same time extremely strong, so stronger than steel, what they think that they can do is that they can go into the upper atmosphere and they can, you know, travelling can be done from the upper atmosphere rather than lower down. It would make it a lot faster. Travel would be a lot faster. If you could go up much higher, you don't have to go through the air, it's a lot more economical, it's a lot, it, it would definitely be a lot faster. Um, you better carry more weight. It's only just getting up there, and that's why you need the much lighter materials than the big, you know, um, aircraft made out of all kinds of iron and stuff. It's it's, it's very heavy. Aircraft are very very heavy creatures. Um, if you could reduce the weight considerably, you'd be able to reduce the cost of um, transport and everything else quite considerably as well. And this is something that everybody is working for. But I think that we have found right here in Farming Simulator the next super material we've got it it's, it's right here it's wood chips this is what you need build your spaceships and your aircraft and your, your sky rise buildings because this is another thing they want it for is um sky rise buildings because at the moment they've got steel and there's only so high that you can build steel 
before it starts to become uh, quite weak and that they do start to encounter issues with it. So, uh, you know, a super material that would be able to go higher still, they'd be able to build buildings that were like two kilometers tall. If you could build a building that is two kilometers tall, uh, you know, just, just think of the people that you could put in it. It would be incredible. Um, but yeah, we, we, we found it right here. We, we've got the super material that everybody is searching for. And I think we before we advertise this too much, we do need to um, ensure that we've got some patents and stuff on it. Um, and we also need to make sure that it's international so that we don't have our government rushing in and saying, oh, we need this, uh, it's a matter of national security, and then taking it. You know, much like uh, the US government and the UK government have done in the last uh, 30 years to four or five people that invented um, water-powered engines, uh, there's a few water-powered engines that have been invented in the last 30 or... It's, I thought it might actually be as much as 50 years ago that the first ones were turning up. And every time one was invented, the government of whichever country the person lived in would rush in and say, in the matter of national, in, in the matters of um, you know national security, um, we're going to have to confiscate this and stop you from releasing it. Um, and it wasn't national security so much as um, economic security, because if you think if somebody had released a water-powered engine, it would have destroyed the economy, which is all based on oil. So uh, you know they they had their reasons for it, but. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of the same thing. So if we want to be able to release our super material, we're going to have to play things very carefully or we're going to have it confiscated by the government in the matters of national security. Um, but anyway, that's enough of conspiracy theories and super materials and um, hammering tractors into the dirt. I've run out of time for today's episode. So remember, comments in the comment section down below about what map you'd like me to play next. If you've enjoyed this episode, then please hit down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.